All right, who doesn't want to get rid of belly fat these days? I hear it all the time. And I got three ways we can do that via fitness. But for starters, it will require a food overhaul. You know, if chips and crackers are a regular part of our routine, or sugar-free white chocolate mochas, there's no amount of physical exertion that is going to be able to dissolve the energy pouch that's sitting around our midsection because we have too many inputs, too much information saying to grow that energy pouch compared to those saying to relieve ourselves of that energy pouch. However, if you're taking you know, reasonable care of your food routine, you're, you're, you know, you're making strides in that direction, there are particular types of physical fitness physical exertion that can be total game changers for you know getting rid of this insulin cortisol hormonal fat around our belly and uh, you know the underlying premise to maximal abdominal fat burning is to recruit the biggest muscles of our body and the greatest number of muscle fibers at a single moment you know, during a routine to maximize our energy burning capacity and to minimize the amount of cortisol spiked from our workout routine. So as many muscles as possible, as little cortisol spike as possible. So if you're feeling, you know, physically and emotionally devastated from most of your workouts, you're probably overdoing it. And that belly fat pouch is probably not going anywhere. Even though you might get fitter, even though you might get stronger, the belly just can hang around because your cortisol is going through the roof after every workout. You know, and there's nothing wrong with feeling this devastation after a workout on occasion, uh, you know, as a way to basically build mental fortitude, you know, and kind of see how far your body can push before you got to say, all right, I'm done. But if workout after workout is, com- is completed this way, yeah, you're, you're doing yourself a, a disservice and you're actually you know, promoting a stress response in your tissues, which is the exact opposite of what you want to do when it comes to relieving your body um, or uh, you know, devastating the, the, the visceral fat or the abdominal fat hanging around uh, around that umbilicus area and that you know, may just like hang over um, your pants and that kind of thing. So we're looking for maximal exercise input with minimal cortisol output. You know, that's our, that's our underlying premise here and finding that balance that that's your key to unlock that door. That is belly fat burning success. And you know, the majority of belly fat is, is related to stress. It's it's a stress response of our body, whether that's from, you know, like I said, insane amount of exercise, um, devastating exercise it is you know excess inflammation in the body excess processed food ingestion that's probably a big one folks or uh, you know just an excess insulin and cortisol response uh, from either food inputs from the life stress and, and that, that kind of thing so you know sitting at a desk staring at a computer while say checking the latest world events and you know grabbing some chips and cracker snacks here and there organic kind of course uh, Organic or not, chips and crackers just aren't going to do it, you know. Or or other flour or added sugar-based meals. These are these are a recipe for bel- belly fat creation. If you want belly fat, you do that. Um, of course, you know if you throw in a beer or two at night, all the more help to growing belly fat. Because you know we just weren't we weren't created to just sit behind a computer and uh, veg out day after day as a, a manner of work. So let's get into it. Three things that can help you burn belly fat. And if you have not already actually, hit the likes button, the subscribe button, and even if you give a little punch to that bell, then that will make sure that you're notified each time one of these crazy amazing uh, health accumulation videos show up because I like to make them often and uh, I wanna see as many people as possible accumulating ridiculous amount of help ridiculous amounts of health so that um, you know, we can all enjoy life to our fullest. And if you would like workouts for free delivered to your inbox, 
five days a week, then um, you can click the link in the description. And literally my wife, Dr. Amos workout she does five days a week, will be coming to your inbox. And you can enjoy those yourself. So number one, let's get, we have to get more overall activity or steps in during the day. If we're going to burn belly fat, we just have to be more active for one. You know, the, we, give the, we have to give the body a reason to open up muscle cells and to send glucose and fatty acids into those muscle cells to be used as an energy source, rather than thinking it's going to store that energy because you know we're sitting at a desk six, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day maybe in some cases. And you know if you're say getting you know, 2,000 to 4,000 steps in a day, well, that would be like you increasing that to maybe 4,000 to 8,000 steps a day uh, to help get rid of some of that belly fat that's, that's accumulated over time. And you know, this could be everything from, you know, I'm gonna take the stairs, I'm gonna park farther away when I go in the office, park farther away at the grocery store. This could be um, maybe you go in the grocery store and it's nasty out. So you take like three laps around the grocery store while you're in there. Uh, this could be, you know, taking a 10 minute walk, you know, every couple hours while at work. This could be taking a 30 minute walk at lunchtime. This could be going for uh, you know, a five, 10 minute walk after each meal, which is a fantastic idea to minimize the, um, the blood sugar spikes of a meal, uh, by the way. This could be uh, you know, skipping that show a night. Instead of watching the TV show, surfing on your phone, internet, maybe you go for a walk or a bike ride. Get your wife, get your daughter, get your, get your husband, and go for a walk, go for a jog. And walking and jogging definitely would be ideal compared to riding. But if you got you know knee issues or hip issues or whatever for whatever reason, just um, walking is not something you can do a lot of. Then um, riding is also fantastic. That would be that would be amazing. Um, or maybe it's a lip, elliptical machine you hop on for five minutes. But uh, we we need something to just use up some of the excess energy that the that the body finds in it because we're not we are not built to sit behind a computer all day and stare at a screen. That's not how God created us. There's every part of biology, physiology suggests that is not how God created us to, to operate. And so we gotta, we gotta put our body into an operation phase uh, that is how it was meant to work and function. And then we'll get the most out of our body. Uh, I would also suggest the reason that walking and say jogging would be more helpful than riding is that you have to recruit so many more muscles when it comes to walking or carrying our own body weight around versus sitting on a bike um, or even sitting on say a rower and it's supporting our body weight. Which you know, the, a big person, a big human is gonna love sitting on a rower, sitting on a bike because they can just go so fast on there and, and you know, burn through so many calories um, and, and energy. But you know, the reason that so, you're enjoying that so much probably is because the rower, the bike is carrying your weight for you. As opposed to you have to go jog or you know do some burpees or you know those kind of things you know you have to carry all your weight yourself um, but that can also be an advantage if you want to burn a bunch of calories really fast in your own, own being is if you go for that walk go for that jog man it's gonna take a lot more energy to move your heavier body around you know than some little little lightweight uh, body uh, you know you, and this also could be if you're like really stuck can't go someplace maybe you drop and do 10 air squats every hour maybe you do five push-ups every hour uh, while you're at work uh, I know this can sound ridiculous, but like I said, every part of human physiology, of biology, all the sciences suggest highly that humans were not created to literally sit at a desk, stare at a screen, you know, for six, 10 hours a day and, and eat meals all the way, all in between because we have this insane abundance of food all around us. So it's going to require, unfortunately, a conscious planned action on our part to burn off that belly fat and keep that belly fat from accumulating, uh, which is that's something we do not want to accumulate, uh, given our, our current work setting. All right, so number two, lifting weights, strength training. I know a lot, a lot of people don't like lifting weights, strength training, you know, they feel like that's painful, it's complicated, that kind of thing, but I'm gonna try to make that so uncomplicated for you guys in videos coming up here in the future. Um, the main things we want to think about when it comes to lifting weights and strength training is going through full range of motion. So we're, we're doing some weights and we're going through full range of motion. You know, instead of say just like, I'm going to go, you know, jump up and down and you know get out of breath really quick, doing this like Reebok pump class kind of thing, 
Instead, I would highly suggest thinking about performing lunge movements, performing squats, full range of motion squats, deadlifts, thrusters, pull-ups, pull-downs, rows, push-ups, you know, shoulder presses. These compound movements where basically you're, you're going through more than one joint is having to be mobilized to perform that movement. These use massive amounts of energy and they literally, they trigger secretions of growth hormone, of testosterone, which those are literally the antithesis. Those are the opposite of cortisol response in the body. Those are the opposite of everything that's going to signal your body to create belly fat. The uh, liberation of testosterone and growth hormone are going are gonna to give us all the opposite effects. So even though, you know, maybe doing a plank is fun, doing some sit-ups feels nice, some crunchies feels good, some little, you know, uh, external oblique movements, uh, some bicep curls looks cool, tricep extensions feels great. Those, um, you know, front raises or lateral raises for our deltoids, those are all fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those movements at all. Um, great accessory movements, but they're going to do so little for us when it comes to burning belly fat compared to the insane metabolic response that's going to happen when you activate your glutes, when you uh, activate and get your chest burning, when you get your, your, all your lats and your, your traps and these big back muscles activated, when your hamstrings are, are under duress, when your quadriceps, your, the muscles on the front of your thighs, when those are burning. It's a totally different ballgame for the body. And it, it, that's putting out a totally different um, genetic response and turning out all kinds of amazing genes at a very high level that's going to enable you to burn a lot of fat. All right, number three. One time per week, I would perform some kind of interval training, some kind of sprint training. So this could be like uh, maybe you, you know, have a couple of flights of stairs. You can sprint up and down. Um, and I would, basically what it would look like is I would sprint up the stairs, then I would walk down the stairs. Once you get to the bottom, you'd sprint back up. Um, or this could be, uh, you know, if you have a track you can go to, uh, or even myself, you know, we uh, took a little um, measuring wheel and we figured out, you know, how far is 100 meters, how far is 200 meters, how far is 400 meters um, at our house. And so um, I will do sprints of 100 meters, sometimes do sprints of 200 meters. 400 meter sprint, um, that's, that's taxing, but we'll, we'll try. Um, but generally 100 meter or 400 meter sprints. Uh, and then walking back to the starting spot. Once you get back to the starting spot, you give a full out sprint and again. Um, then you walk back to the starting spot, full out sprint again. And you know, this can also be done. If you're like, man, I got nowhere to do any of this stuff. I got like, just like this little box, one little bedroom that I can do things in. You can do the same thing with like air squats or, or walking lunges or jumping lunges, or you could do it with push ups, um, where you basically uh, say, okay, I'm gonna do. Uh, squats as fast as I can for say uh, 20 seconds or walk I'm gonna do walking lunges until I get that crazy burn and then I'm gonna I'm gonna walk back to where I started from and then do it again um, basically giving yourself a, an equal work to rest ratio but you want this to be you know pretty high intensity and you know these these sets should essentially get your your muscles and your and your air your oxygen your, your respiratory system going to failure where you're like oh my goodness I gotta stop I give myself a break here and this should happen within about you know 20 to 30 seconds of you doing the movement, and depending on your fitness level, uh, you know you could do anywhere from five sets to potentially 20 sets of these intervals uh, to get the results you're looking for. And I, I and I would just one thing consider is I wouldn't do these more than once per week because you know your muscles, your joints, your your nervous system is going to be really taxed, and you have to show up every day to do 100% full on you know, leave everything on, on the table kind of thing, your body just, it's not gonna last that way. And you're gonna end up um, succumbing to fatigue and exhaustion. So take those three things, give that, put them to work. You know, we've got the interval sprints, we have the, um, and you uh, one hour thing on the interval sprints. You know, you could, if you're like, man, I can't, uh, my legs don't work like that, I can't sprint, I can't walk upstairs, uh, I can't perform a squat, I can't perform a lunge. There's always something you can perform. So maybe that's for you. you. See, literally the only thing I can do is lift my arms up and down. Then I would, I would have days where you're like, okay, I'm gonna do some, you know, get some 15 pounders, five pounders, 10 pounders, whatever you need. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, basically I'm running with via bicep curls. Uh, 
and um, or I'm doing, uh, you know, maybe it's uh, you, you get it on a bike, on, a, on an elliptical machine, or on a stationary bike, or a recumbent bike, and uh, um, you, you do the sprints on there. Or if you're like, I can't do sprints, no big deal, no big deal. Let's find something else you can do. Let's wherever your fitness level is at. All it takes is doing a little bit more than your current level to get results. If we, no matter if you're the fittest person on the planet or the, you're the least fittest person on the planet, if we, any of us do a little bit more than we're currently doing, have a little bit higher intensity, add a little bit more resistance, go through a little better range of motion, we will adapt and we can get results. So there is no excuse that will work for anybody to not increase their fitness capacity just a little bit more, which will enable all of us to burn a little more belly fat. All right, so um, yeah, do the interval sprints, put weightlifting as part of your routine, full range of motion, and then um, you gotta watch the cheese and cr the crackers, right? The chips, crackers, that kind of stuff. It's just not gonna work out for belly fat. And then, you know, find some ways to get a little bit of movement just in your general day. A couple little things, simple things, done consistently make for massive health, accumula health accumulation. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. And um, yeah, like, subscribe, check out the description below to see um, workouts from Dr. Ama. And man, have some fun. Let's get fit.